What I want you to imagine is this railway set is, um, uh, represents four billion years of life on Earth, obviously, uh, starting here and with the present day over here. Now, throughout that four billion years, the world has changed, and it's constantly changing because the tectonic plates are moving, there are volcanoes, meteorite strikes, the atmosphere is changing. All the time, the environment's changing. So therefore, the, the change in direction represents all the different changes that have been happening on life on Earth. And the question is, how come life has stayed on the track? How come life hasn't become extinct? Why aren't we a dead planet like in Mars, right? Now, this candle here, uh, is going to be our first candidate to represent life. Okay? Now, this design of life, okay, if we put it on the rails, what do you think is going to happen when it gets to the corner? Right, okay, all using your rational minds. That's excellent. Let's see what happens. Give it a little nudge. And, oh, yes, it falls off. Well done. Absolutely right. Well done. Okay, so that sort of design in the natural world wouldn't work very well. But if you take a couple of champagne glasses... These ones are excellent if you're camping, because you can just take off the little bits at the bottom like that, you see. Uh, I'll put them over here. Actually, there's something I prepared earlier. Two exactly the same, but I've sellotaped them around there just to save a little bit of time. OK, so this is uh, another type of candle, if you like, another type of baton, but with a slightly different design. You'll notice it's got flanged edges. And because its design is a little bit different, the idea is that it can stay on the tracks all the way around, because it's a natural self-correcting system just like evolution is a natural self-collecting system. There's no need for a computer, there's no, even no wheels. You don't need a god, you don't need anything in order for this, hopefully, to stay on the track despite what happens in the evolutionary process in life on Earth. Yeah! yeah. All right, thank you, great. I've chosen a species here, number 54, because it's got an extraordinary story. Uh, and there is a question, we're not going to use our pads, but just out of interest, I wonder if anybody can guess, there is a crop um, that is responsible for $36 billion worth of uh, revenue in the United States. Anybody want to have a guess what it is each year? Oh, there's a few right answers in there, a few right answers in there. Yes, indeed, it's cannabis. Indeed, <laughs> cannabis. Which isn't bad, really. As it's, well, maybe if it was legal, people wouldn't bother. I don't know. But uh, cannabis is an amazing plant. I've just got to tell you about cannabis. Uh, because cannabis uh, it, it naturally grows in the wild, and it has a defense against being grazed by herbivores. And its defense is a certain chemical called THC. Um, and THC um, makes you forget things. Uh, and therefore, when the herbivore comes back and tries to find the cannabis again, can't remember where to go. It's absolutely <laughs> brilliant. So... Uh, it's a really very, very clever strategy. Particularly if you think if it had a toxin that killed the herbivore, then some of those herbivores would be immune, and then they would reproduce, and then the cannabis would be in trouble. So this is really, really effective. Uh, but with humans, what's amazing is that we have a chemical in our brain called anandamide. It was only uncovered in the 1990s by some Israeli scientists. And anandamide is amazing because it, it creates forgetfulness in humans. And it's used particularly at traumatic moments, like, for example, Childbirth. Has anybody experienced that here? Childbirth? <laughs> Do you remember? A little bit, but probably not as well as you would have done because anandamide kicks in just at that moment. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't have any more children, you see. So really, really powerful stuff. Uh, and other sort of moments of great trauma, anandamide pops in the brain. You forget all about the real kind of terrible things that happened. Uh, and it's a sort of self-defense, really, in a way. But the thing is that anandamide metabolizes in two minutes, and then it's gone. Cannabis... THC, put that, and it travels exactly down, all the way down the same pathways as anandamide, creates the same effect in the human mind, but it takes two or three hours to metabolize. Wow. So the idea of cannabis is that it makes you very forgetful. You, you don't really forget about your, you forget about your worries, about your anxieties. I'm just speaking here from having read a few books about it, but uh, <laughs> this is apparently the case. And so it's been quite popular, and that's why it's so cultivated uh, among, for, amongst human beings. So I hope there I've given you a little flavor of what, where humans fit in. We've had 50 species that have evolved in the wild. I've shown you a few of them. They've all got amazing stories. And biodiversity is the key that keeps life on the rails in, in the non-human world. 
And then I've tried to share with you some of the select few species that have thrived as a result of humans, really. Okay, so 50 species after humans. And uh, the issue there is that it's not biodiversity that we want to cultivate at all. In a way, we're destroying biodiversity by only cultivating a few species that uh, delight us in many different ways, whether it's food or our senses or stimulate our minds. And therein, I suppose, lies the message of the book. There is a danger. And that is that the self-correcting symmetry of evolution, which is based on biodiversity, the flanges, really, on the, on the, on the uh, champagne glasses, that is in danger of being replaced by just a few species, and the design of the self-correcting system could become more like one of those red candles, so that when conditions change in the environment, evolution and nature is not well-equipped, not robust enough, necessarily, to be able to correct itself, because there isn't enough variety in the world. And a lot of people wonder, why is it important to preserve different species? Why don't we just kill everything that we don't like and just grow everything that we do like, and then life will be a lot easier? Well, actually, the reason, I think, is because biodiversity is absolutely at the heart of how we got here in the first place. And at our peril, do we forget what on earth evolved. Thank you very much. <laughs>